Well, Matt, Rhode Island is the smallest American state, but one of those feeling the biggest impacts of climate change. It was the first U.S. state on the mainland to experience temperatures rising above two degrees, that critical threshold that scientists keep warning us about. That means rising sea levels and warmer waters. And yes, coastal erosion does happen all the time, but this beach here is disappearing fast. Now, all that and more is expected to be on the agenda next week when world leaders come together in New York at the UN Climate Summit. Donald Trump is expected to be among them, but do not expect him to make any fresh commitments to the environment. Remember, this is the US president that once described climate change as a hoax. And that really is why the residents here have a message for their president. They say, come down here to this beach and see for yourself our holiday cottages being washed away by this rising tide. And maybe then, Mr. President, you'll believe. When people say there's no climate change, that we're living in. Come and look out my window, come and sit on my deck. We're living it, the ocean is getting closer and closer to us. 10, 20 years, so we'll probably have moved more cottages, the erosion will be worse. Beyond that, it's probably gonna be underwater. For Jean and Tom Kanachet, this isn't just a beach. It's the place they met nearly 50 years ago. They raised their children here and their children's children, but now climate change is forcing them out. We don't wanna go, but we... We don't want to go, but we don't want to be in the ocean either. So, I mean, if you had a crystal ball and say the ocean's going to stay here, we'd say, great, but it doesn't seem like that's happening. Mm. It's creeping up on us. All right, so this is in the 70s, and this is our house, and you can see all the grass and then all the sand, and right here, just starting to show the ocean. Mm. But then this one was 2012, and you can see over here, these spots are spots where the houses had to be moved to the back. They may only have a few summers left here. The family has secured a new plot at the back of the site and will soon swap their water's edge view for one of the cornfields that back onto Route 1. Safe from the waves, but for how long? Up the beach, the local store is packing up to move. Not for the first time. The rising water forced them to retreat in 2008. That bought them a decade. But now, with the waves lapping ever closer, they're on the move again. Oh, where we're walking right now was a gravel parking lot, a two-lane road, about 50 feet. Rob Torrison's family owns the beach. He says it's unrecognizable from his childhood, save for the odd chunk of washed-up pavement, the tiny telltale sign of what once was. I mean, this looks to anybody like an incredibly idyllic beach, but it's changed dramatically. I mean, there's so little sand and beach here compared to what there was. It felt like it was a, a trek to get to the water when I was little, and now it's, you know, in your front yard, literally. With a president who only begrudgingly concedes the existence of climate change, perhaps it's no wonder that a YouGov poll this week showed 15% of Americans believe the climate is not changing at all, or they don't think human behavior has anything to do with it. Rob isn't one of those. And are you in any doubt as to what's causing that? What is causing that? Without a doubt, climate change and sea level rise. Caused by what, though? Um, I'd have to say mostly humans and different countries being irresponsible in, you know, how they do things. Including We're, your own? Including our own. We're probably one of the worst right now. For some on America's northeast coast, Superstorm Sandy in 2012 was a wake-up call. Nowhere more than here in Rhode Island. Sandy hit and damaged the entire front row. Three houses completely washed away. So I think that was a reality check for a lot of the cottage owners that maybe they're not as safe as they think they are. Here's that store that you were talking about that's getting ready to move. Pam Rubinoff has modeled the impact of sea level rising on Roy Carpenter's beach. When you look towards the end of the century, 2100, you could see 10 feet of sea level rise. This is going to be daily inundation of these cottages. 
and so it really will not be very livable. With its 400 miles of coastline, Pam says this state is uniquely affected. Sea level rises here in Rhode Island are slightly higher than global. And part of that is because we have our Gulf Stream coming up from the Gulf of Mexico, um, and that is coming closer to our shore. Um, and a lot of that has to do with um, the changes that we're seeing in the, in the glaciers and in the ice sheets. The warmer water is changing the underwater world too. Lobster numbers declining because they prefer the colder seas and new species are coming in. We caught up with Rich unloading his catch after a 12-hour trawl. Today there's a lot of sea bass. It's a, it's a new predator on the lobsters that I catch. You know, they're here year-round and what they do is they, they're, they're bottom feeding. They're eating baby lobsters, they're eating baby crabs. As fishermen, we've always done is we adapt to change, you know. So no matter what happens, if it gets warmer out there, there's going to be something that I can catch. As the sea levels rise here, so too do the costs to mitigate the impact. But the state believes it's not Rhode Island that should foot the bill, but the big oil and gas firms that for decades it believes have knowingly produced and marketed the fossil fuels that have contributed to global warming. It's now suing the likes of BP, Shell and Chevron. Chevron did get back to us to say. We are working to find real solutions to climate change that are undermined by special interest lawsuits designed to punish a few companies in one industry. These lawsuits will do nothing to address climate change and threaten to undermine the American economy. Litigation isn't the answer here. And so to say, to try to single anybody out here um, because of there's, a, there's a cost involved isn't the way to go about doing this. The way to go about doing this is having our elected leaders, our policymakers, make smart decisions. Well, climate change is right here. I mean, right now, it seems not. Donald Trump's only environmental decisions are to unpick the protections put in place by his predecessor. Do you guys vote for him? Would it make you change your opinion next time around? <laughs> I didn't vote for him, but I think so many else I did. did. Jenna, is it a big issue for you for the election next year? Mm. Yes. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's something yeah. other people don't care about because they're not involved in it, but we, mm. do, we are. For now, Jean and Tom sit and soak up the view before their beach disappears under the rising seas. Siobhan Kennedy, now our Washington correspondent with that special report. Now, Dr. Mariah Caff Caffrey was a climate scientist in the U.S. National Park Service when Barack Obama was president. She was the author of a report which warned about the possible effects on coastal areas of rising sea levels and storms. But after President Trump came to power, she says that her report was first delayed and then attempts were made to remove any mention of the human causes of climate change. I spoke to Dr. Mariah Caffrey earlier and began by asking about what changed with the new president. So I wrote this report during the Obama administration in 2016, I handed it in. It went through peer review, which is standard for a scientific report of this uh, quality. And um, then the Trump administration happened. And so within the first week of the Trump administration, I was told that they were putting the report on hold while they discussed messaging. And from there on, I was given various dates where it would be released and then it would be withheld with increasingly vaguer um, reasons why that would be. And is that when you decided to become a whistleblower? You make it sound like being a whistleblower is a choice. Um, I didn't decide to become a whistleblower. I felt like that was a necessity. Mm -hmm. um, we need to talk out, out and clearly about what's going on in the administration. I'm hoping that by talking about this, then it's going to deter people that are currently pressuring other scientists within the administration to change their work. And I know there are other scientists going through this right now. I talk to them. Um, so, yeah, I guess I became a whistleblower based off of this um, experience. But there, there's several of us that are speaking out because this is a very important issue. I think lying to the public is very dangerous. Mm -hmm. So, Maria, is it your understanding that all this 
all the stuff that you've gone through and others might be going through right now emanates from the fact that Donald Trump just doesn't believe in the science of climate change. That's correct. I mean, it was night and day between the previous administration and when the Trump administration came in. And so at one point I was told that we work under the executive branch and therefore we work for the president, not that we work for the American people. Um, so it wasn't about pro providing truth to the American people, providing them the most accurate information that they have paid for with their tax dollars. It was about towing the line with the Trump administration. As one person said to me, we just have to ride this out for four to eight years and then we can go back to work providing accurate climate information again. But they were worried about losing their departments, losing their funding, and so now we're stuck in a situation where we're lying to the American public about what's going on. And we don't have eight years to be sitting back and denying climate. This crisis is happening far too rapidly. If you do have to ride this out for another four years, if the science has to ride out another Trump administration, what are the lasting consequences of what he's been doing you know, in recent years that go beyond his term in office? There's going to be significant impacts. First of all, a number of climate scientists have left their position or taken early retirement um, because of the pressure that they felt within their positions, which loses a vast amount of institutional memory by doing that. We have storms occurring right now that could potentially damage our public lands. We have Trump's wall that just yesterday the National Park Service issued a statement saying that the building of that wall will damage numerous archaeological sites. So there's a lot of damage that's going to be done um, in the time that the Trump administration is in place and in the long term as well. Maria Caffrey, thank you very much indeed.